there's a lot of people that really probably have something to say and they can express themselves through art, but they're so afraid of making a mistake that they're not willing to just do it. I'm not really that great of a skilled artist. There's so many artists that are way more talented than me, but for whatever reason, I feel comfortable enough in my expression to put it out there. And I think what they look at, they say, you know, if I could paint, that's how I would do it. I would just be free, and it gives them license to at least dream. I was always of the school of thought that sometimes you have to jump in order to swim. Michelangelo said it best. He said that, that it was already there, I just chipped away the excess. One of the hardest working artists in the business, Carrie Fell has a contemporary take on the New West. Her dramatic use of color and line draws you into the traditional stories of Western art. Stories of cowboys, cowgirls, horses, and the infinite sky. If anybody's ever been to a ghost town, you just can imagine how when a life was bustling and everything was going. I thought that was what my story was. It was these ghostly writers and and they were going to ride through because they had all this colorful, wonderful, charismatic personalities and they were like salt of the earth and they had the essence of what a human being really wants to do when they want to change something that they don't think is right. And they had that, that fire in them, that fire in the belly. And so that's what I thought I would paint to this, this hard charging horseman that became quintessential in my work. That They were riding forward and you could f almost hear them ride didn't really like it when I was called a Western artist because it was like there were so many great Western artists that actually depicted the West. I was depicting a completely different cowboy. It was a cowboy that didn't exist. It was just in my imagination. It wasn't just about the cowboy. It was about creating something without a face that somebody could look at and then put themselves there, put a person there. It really became a muse. The whole idea of it became a muse. And there was so much that you could say. I mean, there was so much you could do. The cowboy for Carrie became the searcher, the scout, the symbol of her own personal journey as she navigated this ever-changing frontier. Before long, this image had a voice of its own. Ruby's letters, the edge of wild, Suddenly, Ruby becomes preoccupied with the ease of her way, even at the sight of the broken fence. She counts on October's road to be blanketed with early fallen leaves so to cushion the rugged miles of byway that lead towards cowboy country. Later on is when I started writing from Ruby, and Ruby is my pen name that I write in my journals. And she is like this nomad or this, this traveling rambler, and she just goes, and it's just a life journey. And so when I write Ruby, Ruby's looking for cowboy all the time. Ruby is in search of cowboy. That's all she's doing. And a lot of people read that as a, as a romance tale that is being spun, but it's really not. She's looking for herself always, always uncovering something new about herself. Why that made sense for me, why it didn't become a depiction of Western genre, it became a depiction of using using the genre and being able to weave a story that I was trying to tell about myself, but I didn't really want to tell anybody about myself because I didn't really reveal too much about myself, hiding behind the art, the whole thing. But it worked, and it works for me still because I can really lay out what I want to feel, and, and want, but I don't have to say it. I can say it in a picture, um, and I can say it so subtly that I still know that it was maybe deep and complex, and somebody else says, oh, it's just a cowboy and a horse. What she searches for may forever lie on the other side. Ruby adjusts herself back firmly in the saddle and climbs the mountain, if only to get a vision as to what opportunity may befall her. The Native Americans actually just came from a collector that you know, that really um, wanted me to do a Native American piece. He collected that genre. 
and he loved my style, but he really wanted to see an Indian, and so he asked me, and he gave me kind of a homework assignment. So I studied up on, on the Chiefs and who they were, and it was great. Anytime you can go in life and you get you could educate yourself on something that you would just really didn't care about before, but all of a sudden you had this hunger for it, it was fun. And so that kind of took me on a little year's journey of doing these, these native chiefs, and they were fantastic and kind of dark too. You know, we all have a time, I think, in our lives where, where we're kind of pushed against the wall and we're forced to, to choose, maybe, or something is chosen for us. And that's that look that they get. That's that look in their eye of determination and persistence and bravery. And I almost think that's a human condition again. And that's what I loved about the Native Americans. And that's what I hoped I said through that series of work. Invariably, life finds a way of pushing us all against the wall. And Carrie is no stranger to the hardships that come with forging new roads and new ideas. But Carrie remains confident and dedicated to her passion. With a message as strong as it is beautiful, Carrie approaches each new set of paintings with a sense of pride and responsibility, each line a part of the tale the cowboy is weaving. I think I have a unique way of stating a message and I'm hoping that through the different expressions that I'm able to, to investigate and, and work in my art, that maybe they will see me as a really strong artist of the 21st century, somebody who saw change, who, who took that bridge to the other side. Whether they're going to put me into the category of Western art or contemporary, I guess time will tell. I think that the first 20 years was my younger woman. It'll be interesting to see what the older woman, the more mature woman, um, will and what her what her perspective on all this will be, and and will the cowboy continue to ride? Nah, time will tell. Dan usually shows up around nine and he starts stretching canvases. In my early, early years, I was working on paper with acrylic and pastels. And it probably wasn't until late 90s that I was um, starting to work into canvas. And canvas was a learning curve. I didn't know if I was going to be able to pull it off. I might have a light pencil drawing on a canvas, but it's only to give me an eye of composition. And once the composition's made, the rest of it is, I never have a photo reference. The rest of it's just done the way the paint moves and the way I feel the color and how the balance. I don't really look at the composition when I'm painting it because I'm painting flat, so I don't have perspective on it. But I'm always looking at balance, so I can work pretty much all four corners of my painting. I don't have to work right at looking at it. So I'm always looking for shape, shape and color and movement and line. Those are the elements of design. You know, like, just no other way to create color except to follow the color wheel, period. There's no other colors in the world. And as an artist that loves color, it gets frustrating because it's like you think you're gonna make a new color and you don't, it's just there on the color wheel. And it's got a compliment. It's how you use it and using colors that sometimes are really unexpected, that's what I love the most. It's like, gosh, when I let see artists go, what the heck is going on here? That just means that they're just so not used to, you know, joining those colors and, and doing it that's probably what I'm probably most skilled at, that I have no idea how I do it. It's just, it's just a boldness. Just try it. The line is constantly being re, um, repetitive in my work, and then the color is, always has to be balanced. So if I see this color here, it's got to be here, it's got to be there, it's got to be here. So your eye is constantly moving around the painting. And then I get to a place in acrylic where I've done layers, and that's usually, it depends on the composition, but it can be three or four to five, six days.
There's a casual tone in the way Carrie discusses her craft that belies years of experience and true creative talent. She has an ease of movement and a method of painting that almost makes the process look easy. And yet the masterpieces Carrie produces speak to the true genius of her abilities. It's the same genius that caught the eye of experienced art dealing family, the Zugers. Paul Zuger quickly recognized the uniqueness of Carrie's art, and the two struck a deal to begin showing Carrie's work around the country. I like shows a lot, and I'm so lucky with Paul and Bonnie Zuger and their vision because to be that well versed in art, that sophisticated, knowing exactly what they're looking at, and fine tuning their galleries to, to give everybody a space, and not one of them overlaps one another. They all have a voice, and it's unique, and it's expressive, and it's individual, and that's the one thing that I hear mostly if I'm just the fly on the wall in the gallery and nobody knows who I am, again, that people will say, we love to come into these galleries because of the art. I love seeing people that come back, you know, whether they're my friends in that area or the collectors that have collected, even though they're never going to collect again, still come to see the new work, still come to talk to me. So there's a different level of people that come, and you need every one of them. And so if everybody gets there at the same time, there's, there's, an, there's an energy and emotion that goes with that. And it's fun, and it should be fun. When I find a collector that has become connected to something um, that I've created, it's a very powerful experience. And, and it's a connection that you have for a very long time, you know, and, um, and it's really cool. Seeing Carrie's work in a gallery is an experience in itself, but there's an energy unleashed on these Western pieces when you see Carrie in the act of actual creation. I went to Rayla and Mike and I said, how about I just set my studio up right center, you know, and I'll just bring up my workhorses and my canvases and we'll set them up and I'll paint, you know, the paintings on the wall and I'll show different stages of what I'm working on and everybody can see that, and they were like, yeah, this is really great. So it was good, and I probably should do it more because I did a lot of work those three days. I told the gallery staff I don't want to do a demo because demos, to me, are a little different. You're doing a demo, there's people listening and talking, and they can talk with you, and so I try to just keep focused by wearing an iPod, and I just told the gallery staff to just let people know that I'm wearing the iPod, and you're just to watch, and, and it really worked out really good, and it was fun. And then there were some times it broke free and we let people in and I'd take it off and let them walk around. So there was some times, but it was great. It was a really great idea. It's those kind of those, those experiences that are unplanned are sometimes the most powerful. I love to meet people and I love people coming back and I love people coming back for the experience of the shows. Yeah, I mean, I'm always there to sell my work because I'm in the business of selling artwork. And my galleries are in the business of selling artwork. But certainly none of us want to sell artwork to somebody who's not ready to buy artwork. And so hopefully you're going to bring a lot of people in to a show that are not in the market to, to purchase another piece and some people that are ready and they're, they're there to find something. You know, a lot of times people say, well, do you ever miss your paintings? And it's like, well, no, I mean, you know, my paintings are created to leave. And that's what I do. It's my job. But when a painting goes somewhere, I get people. I always think I get people. It is in fact her love for people that inspired Carrie to start the Cowboy Ball, an annual charity event that brings friends and collectors together for a night of entertainment with Carrie. The Cowboy Ball for me gives an opportunity for people to come out and see my place and where I am and my space and how I work. It's an intimate and eclectic event with performances, gourmet food, and art of all kinds. The main goal of the evening is to raise money for charity, but it goes much deeper than that. This is where Carrie's uniquely approachable nature flourishes. As collectors get to rub shoulders with their favorite artist, Carrie gets to embrace the new friendships her art has brought her. It's a night of fun and collaboration and is a testament to why Carrie has such a strong and devoted following. So it's bringing people together. I can still promote my artwork and everybody else will have fun. And, and, the, and, the, and the charity will make a great amount of profit on it. But it is my way of continuing my work within the community. That's what Cowboy Ball is for me. 
it's the one part that everybody thinks, oh, you have such a romantic life. And they're like, yeah, all right. Well, this is like one night, two nights. The rest of it is, you know, hard work, hard work. Like any artist, Carrie's work will venture out into new territory. But this journey with Cowboy is more than just a commercial venture or passing phase. I've been painting professionally now for just 19 years, going on 20 years. The Cowboys, primarily. I keep to the core because of pretty much that belief that the Cowboy to me is the guiding light. They had their horse and they navigated by the stars and by you know, the seasons and they knew when to stay and they knew when to go and life romances us and then it gives us these challenging moments that you know, we really have to forge through. You can quit, you know, it's easy. Just lay down your saddle and just, you know, and take a rest or you just move through. And so I'm just one of those move through girls and it's not always fun and it's not always easy, but you just, you just saddle up every day and go, 